2012 R56 Mini Cooper S. So the R56 was the second generation of the BMW Mini. It followed the supercharged R53. And what made the R56 that bit more different was that BMW went away from the supercharger to the turbocharger. And in this form here, it's a 1.6 turbocharged and because it's a late R56 producing around 190 brake horsepower built from 2007 to 2013 so this 2012 car has done 55,000 miles and the current owner who's owned it for the last two years has put 20,000 miles on in these two years and he's had only one issue in its entirety and that was uh, an alternator um, other than that it's just been the standard servicing which did include a cam belt change because that was due um, but other than that it's been pain free and I think that speaks volumes for the engineering that BMW have put into the Mini and to make the Mini brand what it is today and the front pit, the front picture there of the Cooper S with those squirty eyes and those low fog lights and that bonnet scoop which incidentally was needed for the supercharged R53 but actually I believe for the turbocharged R56 was never wanted uh, it was never needed but they kept it on just so it kept the image of the Cooper S nice looking car and I've got to say you've got to score it quite highly on the way the car looks well the Mini's been around so many years now this over 20 years the BMW Mini and it's and it's changed and it's grown and it's it's got a little bit heavier in times although I think the R56 was slightly actually lighter than the R53 but it did swell it did get a little bit longer a little bit wider um, but you look it's a, it's a shape that we all know we all love this off-white sort of almost a, a light shade of cream with the black stripes and the black roof I think sets it off nicely the owner here has specifically changed the these inserts here that go around they're normally chrome so he's, he's put black inserts in there to to match the black stripes the alloys is changed as well to 17 inch black alloys that are critically not run flats anymore because he wanted to get rid of those which I think is a, a really really good decision wing mirrors all black again you've got the the famous S to tell everybody that this is the the hot model of the BMW mini range and I have to say it's a it's a nice looking car with that uh, quite aggressive type of rear, um, rear spoiler that you don't necessarily always see um, when these drive past and again he's got the black surrounds on these rear lights as well <coughs> the exhaust not standard either that's been changed to a full sports exhaust so um, apparently we'll hear a few pops and bangs um, on, the, on the lift off acceleration when we get to the car but I think for all the haters of BMW Mini when the first R53s came out um, you can't not what BMW have done really and uh, with their, either the, R, the early R53s which were supercharged when the R56s surprisingly went turbocharged so let's have a quick look inside 1.6 
turbocharged engine, about 190 brake horsepower. And I think this is where Mini score very highly compared to some of their rivals because um, looking around the cabin here, it's, it's just what you expect from sort of German build standards. It's very well put together. This model's a 2012 with 55,000 miles on the clock. And you have to say that, um, so that's what, nine years old, and it's wearing really, really well. There's, there doesn't, uh, <clears throat> there's very little wear marks at all, and it still looks box fresh, and that has to be testament to the build quality that minis go through here with, um, with, uh, with BMW. The kick plates as well. And blazoned with, although you can't probably see that on the camera very well, blazoned with the Mini Cooper S. Not 100% sure about this fake carbon lookalike stuff personally. Um, but again, each to their own. But if I compare this to something like my Renault Sport Clio 182, this is just a, this is just a step. Well, it's a league above that. Pull the Oh, seat release and that's the space in the back um, <laughs> as you can see on the passenger seat there I was sat in there uh, there's no leg room at all now that's that is all the way back clearly there's lots of space there so you but the story here is that it is a mini after all so rear space is a little bit tight don't expect to be carrying too many adult passengers in the back Let's take a look at the boot. You could argue why when it's a Cooper S, this should all be about the driving. Don't really care what the boot's like, but actually for a lot of people, these may be their only cars and actually it's always really important. And as you can see there, that's um, adequate, um, probably on par with Fiesta, um, Clio, Corsa, uh, might be slightly smaller than the, the, probably the Fiesta and the Corsa, but they do have um, uh, releases there for the rear seats to drop those, which will certainly increase your load capability capacity quite considerably by dropping those rear rear seats. The boot again, yeah, it all feels the doors and the boot when they shut all feel really really good quality <laughs> right let's take the cooper out for a spin um, and see what it's like um, it's very difficult not to draw comparisons between this and the Renault Sport Clio 182 that I've got and also its bigger brother the Megane 250 Cup so be interesting to see how it compares to those two great cars. Right. Let's uh, just wait for this car, pull out, and let's go find some really good driving roads. <laughs> the first thing to say, I think, is about the uh, driving position as well here in the uh, the mini you sit you sit quite low um, uh, and you do feel actually buried into the car which is which is kind of quite nice the the seats very very reminiscent of the Clio's um, so very soft very squidgy um, a long long way apart from the the Recaro's that are in the began so but actually they're nice and comfortable, if not very supportive. Straight away I can feel the some of the quirks of the Mini. Um, the accelerator pedal, it's, it's floor mounted rather than the traditional than, than the traditional type of um, hinged uh, accelerator, so I can just feel that straight away. This bit of rope actually really bad, um, and potholed, and really you're all over this road. You can probably tell with the 
camera, but um, I have to say, although this is, the, 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 the ride feels quite firm early on, um, it's actually riding it okay, to tell you the truth, and I think a lot of that will be down to the owners decided to get rid of those run flats and put normal, sort of normal standard alloys and tyres on, um, which, I, which I, I think that's the right thing to do. I really, I just do not like run flats, they really make that ride far, far too harsh. Ambition's grey, and I think the traditional mini with its that little centre <laughs> rev counter, it's almost reminiscent of the very early smart cars with the little round pods on, on top of the dash. Um, but uh, being a avid follower of all things Porsche, Porsche have had centre rev counters for years and years, and, and uh, for me, love the centre rev counter. Um, the big dial there. Obviously that's reminiscent of the traditional Mini, but you don't really ever look at that, you're just looking at your digital speedo and, and the revs. The gear change is actually really nice. Um, yeah, really nice gear change. And just going through these first few little twisty corners here, the steering just feels like it's the weighing up really nice. I can feel what the front wheels are doing. It all feels quite intuitive straight away and they've only been driving the car for probably a mile, mile and a half already. And that's testament to probably the BMW engineering that, that's gone into this sort of Mini. Visibility's good as well. So I've got really good visibility all around. And it is a firm ride, but actually, having been driving the Began all week, this ride for me is absolutely toler tolerable. It's very compliant. It makes the makes the Megane 250s feel quite harsh and extreme on on its probably larger alloys than these 17s. But yeah, the ride's actually really, really tolerable. Just let the car warm up full and thoroughly before we just just open up the revs and see what see what it goes like. feels like it's made of paper mache and rattling and rocking and, 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 and flimsy. This is just feels more solid because it's BMW and it, and it ripples through but that 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 solid build just comes at a, at a weight that is just that little bit heavier than something like the Clio and that just blunts the acceleration. Where the Clio is all bang and, and it's all fizz uh, but yeah, it's lots of rattling and knocking. This is just more compliant, but it just blunts some of the acceleration. So, but by all means, it's not a slow car. I just call it nippy rather than really, really quick. However, there is a sport button down here, which I'll, I'll switch on shortly. I think the layout, people that have been around BMW Mini now for oh, 20 years, it's what people will know, it's what people will recognise. This has got splashes of sort of carbon trim and a bit of plastics and sort of mock leather and it all, I mean this car is um, nearly 10 years old and it feels really fresh I have to say. And it feels, I mean there's not a rattle or squeak on the car. Um, now that's a testament to probably this car, relatively low mileage um, at 55,000 miles and, it, it, and it's, I mean, it is, the build quality is a step above some of its rivals. But having 
said it all that it really cars like this are meant for how they go and how they handle and, and also how they stop I do love this colour scheme as well this cream and black and I think it um, that's the good thing with minis there's lots of them on the market so as a buyer you've always got a really great choice but BMW did so well putting so many combinations together it just ran into the thousands and so that's why you may see lots of Mini Cooper S's but highly unlikely to find one exactly like your own just stuck behind a quite a slower moving vehicle so we just have to be a little bit patient along this uh, this road this non-standard sports exhaust gives it a nice throaty throb to the 1600 um, turbocharged car and it's uh, yeah and, and, and the, for a turbocharged car the throttle response is pretty good as well it really starts gaining momentum about 3000 and, and right up to sort of the, the higher side of 6000 and th there's a good pull there and it's quite it's it's not peaky it's quite constant reminiscent really of a a turbocharged um, torquey turbocharged unit it's good really pulling banging hard on the brakes here for this right hander just into third gear composed actually so it's a nice set of corners here again dropping into third yeah the road's not the road's not great because it's it's wet in place and dry in others so you're just gonna be a bit cautious flicking through this left right great so really feels like it's a really accomplished car it's probably not as extreme as some cars but I think many have pitched it for the the mass market for that everyday performance car it can do the commuting it can do the the evening and weekend fun drives it, it's got a degree of practicality it's built really really well um, and it feels so screwed together considering, say, this car is probably 10 years old. Yeah, I'm just. You, you struggle to think of another car actually that sits in that market. Now, for some, for the purists that want an out and out sports car, I think I'd get bored of it. I think I'd just. It'd just never be enough power. And. and, and, and I think I just I'd always be seeking a little bit more performance. But I think if you wanted it as an only car, and I think if you wanted performance, but you wanted practicality, you wanted great build quality, you wanted reliability, you wanted a great driving experience, it's doing everything really, really well. But it's probably not exceptional at any one particular thing. And the performance is, it's warm to hot, but it's not red hot. It's not going to fizz you. It's not going to absolutely get the, you, it's not going to get you uh, blood pumping. But I don't think BMW tried to build anything as extreme as that. Because that would have been for a certain sector. They wanted to go for the mass market. And actually, as an as a introduction into performance cars there's a lot to be said for the Mini Cooper S the biggest surprise for me has been the ride I, I think the ride is actually the, they've got it right this is on sports sports suspension now sports springs and dampers and, and it feels great the standard tyres feel great the ride is really really compliant
control light flashing at times as well as it tries to deploy its power through those front wheels. <laughs> and I do love the popping and banging of this sports exhaust. Fantastic. So I've got a great sequence of calls coming up here for about a mile. It's a real left, right, twisty road here, but it's very quite sort of third gear, quite fast and flowing type of corners. So I'm just gonna switch it into sport mode. Um, you get sport come up on the dash and let's see see um, what sport mode does to the, um, to the driving experience. I don't know if you can hear that. But there's a few pops and uh, bangs going on in the exhaust. Yeah, as soon as you lift off, this right hander there. Nice, weighed up nicely. Pedals aren't very good for healing. I've tried to heal and tow and can't do it with, with probably because of the accelerator being floor mounted, I'm just not used to it. Quite a good surface along here. The Mini looks it's really, really capable. Hard on the brakes there. It's a great car. It really is. I think um, as a as a as an everyday type of car, it's really it's more than quick enough. Yeah, really like it, really like it. <laughs> and I love the pop and bangs on the exhaust. So why do I summarize my time with the Mini Cooper S R56? Well, it's a car that seems to be good at everything. I think the build of this car, the build quality, just it looks and feels as quite a special place. The driving experience is good. The engine is good, providing warm, if not super hot performance. The chassis, the turning, there is feedback. It's not the crispest, it's not the cleanest. It doesn't offer me as much as something like the Porsche Boxster does, but it's it, but it's good, and it does everything really well, without ex without doing any one thing exceptionally well, and that's probably the biggest negative for this, because the cars that I've looked at before, the cars that make them special to me, might be really poor at many things, but there's one or two things that they are really special, and this is as an all-round package is, a, is an absolute great car but it doesn't for me exceed in any one of those areas however if I was in the market for a daily warm hatch to use with a degree of practicality reliability robustness build quality and looks and you wrap that together I can absolutely understand how BMW have sold so many R53 and R56 Mini Coopers. I've enjoyed my time with the car. Will I remember it in years to come? Probably not, but it doesn't mean it's a, not a great car. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me the thumbs up, please subscribe and stay tuned because there'll be another video coming up really, really soon.